when there's significant change and I feel like that flag represents what it's supposed to represent, I'll stand. That's NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick. He's been called anti-police, anti-military, a traitor, an idiot, a coward for sitting down for the playing of the U.S. National Anthem. Today, Twitter is ablaze with pictures of the practice socks he's been wearing, bearing the image of a pig in a police uniform. Kaepernick says it's all in protest against police violence and impunity, far from the first time we've seen athlete activism and a backlash. The birth of modern sports activism, the 1960s. Well, I just told him I had no quarrel with the Viet Cong. Anti-war, pro-civil rights. In 1966, Muhammad Ali went from hero to a hated figure almost overnight. Clay seems to have changed the way he is with uh, a captive of the black Muslims. His refusal to fight in Vietnam for a time cost him his heavyweight title. As they come around the bend. Two years later, American sprinters Tommy Smith and John Carlos win gold and bronze at the Mexico City Olympics. It's Tommy Smith, a jubilant winner. On the podium, as the Star Spangled Banner played, a silent black power salute. So incendiary, they were kicked out of Olympic Village and suspended from the U.S. team. Their actions on the podium shocked many, inspired others. The price was clear, and as the business of sports got bigger, athletes got quieter. Justice! Justice! But after years of high-profile deaths of black Americans, something changed. A lot of us have, have young boys. and um... NBA megastar LeBron James led the way in 2012, his whole team posing in hoodies for slain teen Trayvon Martin. And the slogans and symbols of civil rights activism have been worn by other teams in other sports. I'll continue to sit. I'm going to continue to stand with the people that are being oppressed. But Kaepernick, sitting for the U.S. anthem in a sport as steeped in patriotism as football, that's a whole other ball game. What I disagreed with was the method, which is to sit down and disrespect the flag of the United States of America. It's pretty much he's saying he doesn't care for our country. And as those 60s activists know well, a stand like that can carry a price. For more on Kaepernick's stand, the past, and the future of athlete activism, I'm joined by one of its early champions, one of those two American sprinters who raised their fists at the Olympics, John Carlos. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Quite, quite the week. What are you thinking? Uh, there must be flashbacks on the backlash and everything that happened to you. How similar is this? It's uh, deja vu all over again. You know, it really hasn't changed. The format is still the same. Uh, you know, individuals feel that they have a statement they would like to make regards to social issue, social issues, uh, to him, humanitarian issues. Uh, and uh, the backlash is always the same. You know, when you deal with this situation, you have to take into account that there's a, a door. And on that door is a public side and there's a private side. Now, on the public side, they tell you that we have a level playing field. Everyone has an opportunity to, to uh, be successful in life. Everyone has an opportunity for education and health and housing and fair employment. But behind the door, on, on the private side, if you step out of line and don't do what the so-called masters or leaders of this nation want you to do, then you're going to be penalized brutally. Uh, I endured uh, a tremendous amount. I lost a tremendous amount. But yet and still, I would do it all over again uh, if I felt it was necessary. Uh, when I see this young fella do what he did, uh, I think about back in the day, 48 years ago, you know, Harry Edwards, Tommy Smith, John Carlos, Peter Norman, we were horticulturists and gardeners. You know, we tilled the earth and planted seeds and, and watered the, the, the ground. And now you see the labor of our, uh, the fruit of our labor uh, amongst these young individuals. It's not just athletes that are speaking up. I think the arts are speaking up as well. Well, veterans, police associations, NFL commissioners, they're, they're really angry. They're calling him a traitor, disrespectful, those, those socks today uh, kicked off a, a fresh new storm. Um, is any of this fair? Well, I don't, know whether, I don't know anything about the socks, uh, why he would feel the socks are necessary. That's like throwing salt in the wound. But yet and still, I think he has a valid statement. I don't think that he's protesting against police in general. He's protesting against the broken parts of the law enforcement throughout the country. You know, uh, 
we had many young individuals that lose, lost their lives for menial crimes. Uh, they didn't really do no major crimes, but they're dead nonetheless. And uh, we haven't seen law enforcement try and make any corrections to fix the ills within their own departments. And I think that's what he's trying to bring about, some sort of understanding, some sort of conversation, some sort of discussion to try and get these differences resolved. What do you think of the argument that it's not his place, some rich guy uh, speaking out for the oppressed and that a sports arena, a sports star, is not the person to be doing this? Well, I don't know whether anybody can say it's not his place. He's a person of color, and I don't think it matters whether you have a tremendous amount of money or you have no money. On my side, I had $13 in my account in 68. He has $13 million in his account today. But the money is not the issue. What is the issue is what's happening to oppressed people and why they continuously being oppressed to try and get some sort of understanding where people can come to the table and sit down and try and resolve these issues. And the argument we keep hearing is that this is an insult that is disrespectful, particularly of veterans who gave their life to fight for that flag. What do you think yeah, of but that? At the at the same time, those same veterans gave their life to give him the freedom, the right to protest in any fashion that he, he, he believes in. You know, they say he's disrespectful. He never torched the flag. He didn't burn the flag. All he chose to do was just sit down. Now, he says, I feel like I'm a hypocrite when I stand and give a pledge to something that really doesn't fully cover me as it covers other sectors of the United States. So it's been almost 50 years since you were on that podium. Is, the, is anything changing? Well, you know, things is changing. Your justice moves at a very slow pace, slow, slower than a snail. But the bottom line is that you have to still have individuals such as uh, Colin, uh, Tommy Smith, or Malcolm X, or Martin Luther King, or Rosa Parks, or, and so on, Harriet Tubman. You know, you sit back and you think about Harriet Tubman. I hear a lot of naysayers out there talking about, oh, he shouldn't have did it. And I'm talking about people of color in various uh, professional sports and so forth. But you have to realize that, you know, when Harriet Tubman did her deal, she made a statement that was so profound then, it's just as profound today. She said, had I been able to convince these individuals that they were slaves, I could have probably freed a thousand more. And that's the way I feel about individuals that really don't understand what's going on and they have a fear factor, what's happening behind the door. They're worried about that, so they're trying to protect themselves. Well, he certainly uh, contributed to this debate. Thank you so much for, uh, for being part of ours tonight. Thank you for having me. Thank you.